Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello and welcome to Finding Respect in the Chaos on ThinkTechHawaii.com. I am so happy to have you here. And I'm really happy to have a guest with me today. This is Julie Dugan from the Job Corps. And one of the things that happens, you know, with um, with kids that have been involved in domestic violence at their homes, they they need to have some opportunities. And Job Corps provides those kind of opportunities. And so we're gonna talk with Julie today about some of those opportunities for kids. So, Julie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's very nice to have you here. So I know that um, Job Corps was started by President Lyndon Johnson, which blows me away, I had no idea. Um, on the Something about the war on poverty is when he decided to come up with that. Correct. And so what an amazing program. And so if it was him that started it, you guys have been around for a really long time. Yes. So I would love to hear a little bit of history about how Job Corps got started and a little bit more about what you guys do and stuff. Sure. Well, Job Corps is the nation's premier career and technical training program. And like you said, it was started through the Economic Opportunity Act of 1964 under President Lyndon B. Johnson. And it included programs like Job Corps, but also programs that are still around, such as community health centers, wow. the Head Start program, adult basic education. Oh my goodness. Right. I didn't even have any idea that all of those things are sort of in the same uh, bubble, so to speak, right? Correct. Wow. Trying to lift people up from poverty. And like I said, all those programs are still going strong. Oh my gosh, I hope our new um, leader doesn't um, 86 them, since that's what he seems to like to do. But we won't get political. Okay, let's just talk about the good stuff. Actually, I think we have a video that we can show even about Job Corps. It kind of gives a little bit of background to it. I think that we might want to watch. If you could cue up that video, that'd be great. We all have dreams, big dreams, of who we know we want to be, of what we know we can do. And there's a way to get there. But the price of admission isn't money, it's the desire to succeed. Success takes skill. Skill takes training. Training takes work. If you're ready to learn, train, and work, Job Corps is ready for you. These Job Corps students can tell you it's real. Job Corps. Careers begin here. Oh my gosh, that was a wonderful video. That was so amazing. And just to see these kids that are, you know, working so hard to try to make themselves better. Now I know in the past it used to be kind of considered a program for troubled kids but it's really morphed way and, and grown way beyond that now right right again it started with the war on pro poverty trying to give young people opportunities to get out of that those right. income levels right. um, but it's really evolved um, over the years um, it was maybe someone that was in trouble with the law or wasn't making it in school they'd say go to Job Corps well, that didn't work if the young people didn't want to be there right. so it has evolved into a it's a complete volunteer program young people so we work with young adults 16 to 24 from low income backgrounds right. that are in need of education maybe finishing their high school diploma and need of some job skills Right. So, um, so how do they have to go about that then? Do they have to apply? Do they? What's the application process like? They do. So we have admissions counselors all over, um, and they're out in the schools. You know, we have people ask me what a, a typical profile of a job course student is. We have high school graduates that not, might not be able to afford to go on to a community college or a vocational tech school. Job Corps might be an opportunity. We have high school dropouts that realize, I can't get a decent job these days without a high school diploma. 
Right. So we're out there spreading the Job Corps message wherever young people are, and they're influencers, as we call them. They're ohana, their aunties, their uncles, their career counselors at schools. Right. Wherever young people are, we're out there spreading the message. Thank you. Because I'm always saying, we got we to gotta get them young. we got to teach kids young if we want them to grow up, to be adults that know how to treat people with respect. And part of that is learning how to respect themselves, right? Right. Because that's a big thing. I was a, a minister in the South for many years, and I worked with kids for about six years, inner city kids. And one of my favorite kids ended up going to Job Corps because of that exact same reason. Um, she lived in an abusive household. Mm -hmm. Her mom beat her and offered her up as a whatever to all of her boyfriends that ended up raping her. And so she just grew mm -hmm. up in hell, but she knew she wanted to get a better life for herself. And so she ended up with the opportunity to go to Job Corps. It changed her life. Absolutely. When she came out, she went in Kentucky, I think it was. So we were in Alabama. And so she, they, it was really great that they took her away from the local scene to get her away from her friends and get her away from that sure. crowd. And um, and she loved it. She still has friends I know that she's in contact with. She came back. She could get a job. You know, she had got her high school diploma, which was really quite remarkable anyway in that, you know, demographic. Mm -hmm. But for her to go on to Job Corps, it absolutely changed her life. And so I know it changes people's lives. Definitely. And that's why I said we serve all of the Hawaiian Islands and throughout the Pacific. Uh -huh. um, so again, 16 to 24 year old from a low income background that themselves have a desire to enter the program. Not their aunties or their school counselors. <laughs> yeah, right, right. They're not successful that way. Right. You know, uh, they sure. need to be a legal resident of the United States. Uh, they don't need, they can't have any um, court obligations. Oh yeah. no, see, wait, I, I thought that sometimes they could get um, sentenced to Job Corps. Years ago, but that didn't work. Ah. So we've evolved. <laughs> it's a completely volunteer program. Right. The young people want to have to come in. In the past, it could be a court ordered. When I first started at Job Corps 28 years ago, there was some of that going on, but they realized if they're ordered to be there, they're not going to be successful. Right. So sure. we've evolved again over, over the years. So again, People from low-income backgrounds, maybe they've had some truancy, you know, some minor uh, bumps in the road with the judicial system. Right. Um, but we want them to have all that taken care of and so they can participate full-time in the program. We're Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. So they can't have any court obligations. Oh, right. They have to be able to attend class full all day long, every day. It's like a full-time job kind of thing. And the majority of our students live on campus. So wow. they're there full time Monday through Friday. So they can live there and they can, like, you feed them and everything? All of their basic needs are taken care of. Okay, so does it cost anything? How much does it cost for these We're kids? We're a no to cost do this? vocational training program. Oh my gosh. So if they're in need, again, to finish their high school diploma, need some, some job training, we're probably the program for them. Right. I know so many kids that could benefit from this here. Yeah. You know, and people ask, how do they hear about Job Corps? Not only we have admissions counselors and uh, staff on board that are out there spreading the Job Corps message, but most of them learn about it from family members, friends. Right. You know, I was surprised that that, um, that sort of misconception of, of troubled kids go to Job Corps. Because I was talking to somebody about the fact that I was really excited that you were going to be coming on because it's really important to get this word out to people that right. this opportunity is available, right? And and they said to me, oh, isn't that for troubled kids? And I'm like, not anymore, from what I understand. So I was really I was really looking forward to being able to ask you about that and because it's still sort of a misconception for people there, that there we need to change. There is that image, and we're out there trying to, to change it. Um, so our graduates are out in the community. Not only they're, they're concentrating full time on their education and career training, but we encourage them to be part of the community, being good neighbors. So we're very involved with service learning, anything going on in the community. We want our students to be working alongside of community members. You know, giving back to the community, as you well know, is a trait of a responsible, civic-minded citizen. That's right. <laughs> so we're, we're practicing that at Job Corps and with the thought that they'll go back into their communities and continue, pay it forward. 
Right, and that's the hope, of course, always, that yes. they're going to pay it forward. Because yeah. you know they've got to have friends that they know that are struggling or having a rough time. And the economy, unfortunately, here in Hawaii is really hard to have anything extra after you pay your mortgage or your rent. And so having anything for your kids to go to college is, I mean, you got to be making 150000 a year or more if you're going to be able to afford to send your kids to school. Right. And again, we call it a no cost, you know, a scholarship, because if they meet the age and income requirements that desire to improve their lives, it's at no cost to them. Wow. And to operate a program like this, we say it's about a $36,000 a year scholarship because wow. that's what it cost. All their basic needs are taken care of. Housing, medical, dental, clothing what? allowance. What? Medical, dental too? Uniforms. Oh my gosh, They even get amazing. a little bit of spending money. Well, the, the theory is it's operated by Department of Labor and the investment is so they can concentrate full time on their career training. Right, because it's kind of a concentrated training, right? Yes. Wow. So do they, they could, could they come from another state, like, like the little girl that I knew that went from Alabama up to Kentucky? Sure. Is that the kind of thing that can Currently, happen? Currently, Department or? of Labor has it geographically based. Okay. So we serve all of the Hawaiian Islands and throughout the Pacific. Okay. So we serve students from American Samoa, Micronesia, Guam, Palau, and the Marshall, wow. Republic of the Marshall Islands. So if you're living here in Hawaii, one of our two campuses wow. you would come to. If you're living on the mainland, you would attend the closest to where you're, you're residing or the closest in what um, career pathway you're interested in. Oh, right. Center. So that might have it make yes. a difference, right? As but of course, here in Hawaii, we get phone calls on a daily basis, <laughs> students from the mainland <laughs> wanting to come here. But we're serving the, the students of the Hawaiian Islands. Right. So you have two? We have two campuses. Two campuses. Um, our main one is in Waimanalo on the Windward side. Um, that's our largest campus. We serve a little over 200, about 211. 211 kids we in the program? We have room for that in the dormitories. Wow. And then upcountry Maui, beautiful campus in Makawao. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, that we have uh, room for 130 in the dormitories. Oh, my gosh, that's huge. And those are for the students who reside on campus. Right. But then if you wanted to commute, you could do that also. Oh, my goodness, so you don't actually have to live. If you've got a big family and you'd rather live at home, you can just come in or for the daily trainings? Or if you're a young adult, you know, 16 to 24, a lot of them maybe have small children. So at the Waimanalo site, they can commute. We even have a child care center on campus. You do so they can bring their kids with them? Correct. Oh my gosh, so that's awesome. Their children would be receiving quality child care while they concentrate full timing on their full time right. on their career program. Wow, so this is like if you've got someone, say, who got married young and it turns out to be an abusive situation like what we talk about a lot here on mm -hmm. this on this show. Um, they could maybe retrain themselves. They could get some more training so they can get out there in the workforce because they're sort of lost afterwards, right? Correct. Oh, my gosh. And if they already have kids, then that's a way to be able to do this. And it doesn't cost. There's no cost for the child care or anything? No, if they qualify for our program, they would qualify for the child care center right there on our campus. So we want to remove a lot of the barriers that are preventing them from continuing their education right. or receiving job training. Wow. That, that is just remarkable to me that that this since the 60s has been going on and that it's morphed into so much more than it used to be. And it's, I think it's kind of sad that people don't realize that it's not just troubled kids anymore. No. And so I want to help you get that word out because I was really surprised when that person said to me, oh, that's just for troubled kids, right? And I thought, I don't think so, not anymore. Again, we're out there continuing to educate, uh, but we've been serving the, the youth of Hawaii and Pacific actually since 1965, a year after the Opportunity Act passed. Wow. And over the years, like I said, I've been with the Job Corps for 28 years, but even before that, we've had campuses on the Big Island, Kauai, but again, right now we're on um, Oahu and Maui. But we're serving, we go out and recruit from all the different islands. We take care of their, their travel costs. There's right. no cost to the young people that are interested. That is awesome. Well, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Um, right now we need to take a break. 
I'm Cynthia Sinclair. This is Finding Respect in the Chaos on thinktechhawaii.com. Don't go anywhere because we got more to talk about. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Aloha. I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3 and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Welcome back to Finding Respect in the Chaos. I'm Cynthia Sinclair, and this is Julie Dugan, and we are here talking about Job Corps and the way it has changed over the years and the opportunities that they that they have for, for kids. Well, not just kids, but ages 16 to 24. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the exact kinds of um, programs that they have, what they have to offer, and all of that. So Julie, I'm so glad you're here with us so that we can kind of change the narrative that's sort of a negative narrative. Let's get that changed. Exactly. So, so tell us a little bit about what sure. stuff you well, guys do. Well, first of all, our, our <clears throat> motto is careers begin here. Nice. And so again, we're a no cost uh, career and technical training program for youth 16 to 24. Um, our main campus is in Waimanalo. Nice. Beautiful campus on uh, in on the windward side. Um, we built that campus about 22 years ago. Wow! So we built it from the ground up. So nice. our students are responsible for doing the maintenance. That's how they get their hands on. Oh, training. so it's learning stuff too. Exactly. Oh. So when people tour the center, they say it's so gorgeous. I don't see any graffiti. Well. Our students are the ones who maintain it, so they have a vested interest in keeping it in prime right. shape. Sure. Sure. So at our Waimanalo site, we have nine different career tracks. Nine. Uh, That's nine. Huge. Yes. Wow. So we have two medical. The first one, we have a, a certified nurse assistant program. Wow. So we also have a medical office support. So CNA, front. Uh, billing for the... Oh my gosh, there's good money in those two careers. You can make a good living for yourself right. with that kind of a career. All of our trades, um, there's need in the industry. Sure. In fact, we have an advisory council um, that advises us on what the local workforce needs. For example, oh. um, so I mentioned our CNA, our medical office support. One trade that we just added two years ago was our security and protective services. And we added that because the state went to a, a certification program. So for anyone who works in the security field in the state of Hawaii, they need a guard card certification. There wasn't enough training programs. Oh. Job Corps nationally already had a security training program. So we implemented that. Right. So they come out of there with the certification needed to go to work. Brilliant. We have employer partners that are calling wow. me on a daily basis. <laughs> See, we need more of these. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Exactly. We also have a, everyone needs office administration. We have an office administration trade. Right. We have some construction related trades. We have a painting, industrial painting. We have a building maintenance. So in the building maintenance trade, they learn a little bit of um, carpentry, a little plumbing, a little bit electrical to be able to go in and maintain oh my a gosh, facility. It's like a rounded out program where they can kind exactly. of, if they want to specialize later, they can do that. But a they little bit of solar that. also they're exposed to. Oh my gosh, and that's exactly what's needed here in Hawaii because the paint always gets, you know, you need to repaint your house like every two years or something, I think, here. Right. Because the salt air is so hard on paint. Yes. And all of that, all of the stuff that you just talked yeah. about are things that is really in need here. Yeah. So wow. landscaping also, that's huge. That's wonderful. Um, we have a great automotive training program. Wow. Yeah. And the ninth one, we have an outstanding culinary arts program. 
Our, our chef, Robert Tom, is a graduate of the um, Culinary Institute of America, award-winning. Wow. Um, all of our instructors have worked in the field before, so they're very well connected. Um, and so when it comes time for our graduates to go to work, they ease them right into some oh, outstanding they've already positions. got the networking and the connections that they needed to begin with. Correct. Wow, that's brilliant. Yeah, that's so smart. All of those things, too, are so big. So how do you pick whose cars you work on? Can we volunteer our cars <laughs> to get practice done? Yes. Just so, so happens I kind of need some help. <laughs> actually, right now at our Waimanalo site, they do get certified in brakes. Oh. So if someone in the community wants us to work on your car, you would just provide the materials. <laughs> pick me, pick me. Materials, <laughs> and we could do that for you. Oh my gosh, yeah. pick me, pick me, that's amazing. That's where they get their hands-on experience. Oh, because labor is what's so expensive with this stuff too, so. Exactly. Again, right oh. now they're certified brakes. So once a person completes the trade, all of our trades, they leave there with some type of industry recognized certification. You know, years ago, they used to get a nice certificate saying that they were trained at Job Corps. That didn't mean anything to the employers. Sure. So now they all leave with some type of industry recognized certification. Oh, brilliant. So for the that culinary, anyone in the restaurant business has to be serve saved certified. Oh. So they leave with that. Um, our um, office administration leave all with Microsoft Office certifications. All of our hard trades have the OSHA, all those type. And of course, our CNAs leave as a certified nurse aide. We pay for all the certifications. So there's wow. no cost for these students. Well, so the CNA, man, because that's a hard thing. I know that um, at Windward, there's, they have a CNA program that takes... It takes like two years, so that, that program takes two years, so they have to be invested for two years to come to that program, is that right? No, our, our CNA program, depending on the individual, so people ask how long does it take. Right. It depends on the individual. If I come into the program and I've already graduated from high school, I could get through the culinary program in eight to 10 months. Wow. If you needed to work on your high school and go into a trade, it might take a little bit longer. Oh, I see. So the average length of stay or completion right now is one year. You can right. be in the program up to okay. two years. Oh, okay. So there's not only opportunities to get certified, um, but you also could remain in the program and start your college career. Oh my gosh, really? Live in our. So you could still go to. You could be going to college while you're in the program. Right now we have, I believe, it's ten students that have completed the basics. And they have started their college career at Windward Community College. Wow. In fact, just last month, we had two students that graduated from Windward with their associates in liberal arts, and one young lady is, has been accepted into the School of Social Work at UH Manoa. Oh my gosh, and she that's got her, remarkable. She got her start in our program, the first in her um, family, not only to graduate from high school, but in college too. Wow. So the opportunities are there if the young people want to take advantage of them. Yeah. So career training, college, there's also um, advanced training programs on the mainland. So they could actually go to mainland centers after they finished Job Corps. So say, just per se, they say they needed to get their, their high school diploma and then yes. they went through the training, right. but they want more training. So they could go to an advanced level. We get we do basic certification at the wow. Hawaii Center. Yes, they just have to be in great standing. You know, given 110 percent while they're in our program. Sure, so yeah. that they can continue a little bit longer and a little bit further. Correct. And does does that include the um, the transportation to get to this other place? All of their basic needs are taken care of. Everything. Transportation, correct. So while they're living on the program, again, housing, basic medical and dental, we have a delicious dining, full service dining oh, facility. Oh, I was going to say, is that where the career, I mean, the, um, the culinary stuff, do they make the food for the they people assist, that are there? Correct. Oh. Correct. Beautiful dormitories. Oh my goodness. Yes. In addition, when they leave the program, we offer job placement and job retention services. Oh my gosh, that's like remarkable. It's yes. Just, Changes people's lives, kind of like the little girl that I knew in Alabama. It changed her life. Correct. She came back. She got a job. She was just had all these like nowhere little tiny jobs working at the 
you know, the little food mart down the corner. Underemployed. Underemployed, making almost nothing. She had her high school diploma. She heard about Job Corps. She asked me what I thought of it, and I said, I think it's a great program. I read the little brochure with her, and I helped her get the phone call going. So that's why I was so excited when you were coming on today, because I'm like, I know somebody who went through that. And really, it just changed her life. And so I think that's, that's really important, and it's really exciting. And I think that the people here in Hawaii maybe don't know about it. And so that's why I was so excited for you to come on. And There's so many opportunities, and we're always looking for different venues to, to spread the Job Corps message. So if there's anyone out there that is interested, we can come out and do a presentation to your school, to your organization. Okay. So we have staff available. They could contact me directly at 259-6051. Or we do have weekly tours at our Waimanalo campus. It's what? every Thursday at 9 o'clock. I want to come see it. They, you do, <laughs> we do ask for reservations, and they could call 259-3220. At our okay. Maui site, we do tours every Thursday at 10, and they could contact us at 579-6506. I don't think we have that number for the um, screen, so can you repeat that number one more time for them? For our Maui site, you can call 579-6506, tours every Thursday at 10 a.m. Oh my gosh, I think that's important for the kids to be able to come out and take a tour and make sure that it's something that they, instead of just, you know, being curious and hearing it in the, you know, pipeline of things, hearing the, and then to actually get to see it, you know, and maybe even parents that don't want their kids to go to it because they've heard that it's for troubled kids right. can come out and really take a tour and see that it's no longer just that, that it's more than that. And that's very eye-opening when they come take a tour. And we encourage the parents, their support systems, right. you know, their school counselors, anyone, come out and seeing is believing, rather than just hearing it from me, hearing from the young people who are currently participating, right. hearing from the instructors about the employment opportunities, the connections that we have in the community. They also participate in a six-week um, internship program out at employer sites. Oh. And a lot of times the employers are so impressed with them, they want to hire them on the spot. Wow. Oh, my goodness. All of this is so amazing. Do you have, we're almost out of time. It goes by so fast. I can't believe how fast it goes by when there's so much more to talk about. But um, I want to have you back again so we can talk even more about all this amazing opportunities that you guys have. Do you have one last thing maybe that you'd like to make sure everybody knows about before we're done? Sure. Again, uh, we would love to come out and spread the Job Corps message. They can contact me directly at 259-6051. Or if any of our viewers are watching this from the mainland, you can contact, uh, find out more information about the Job Corps at 1-800-733-JOBS and that's 5627. Right. Awesome. I'm just so happy that you were here, Julie. Thank you so much for coming. And I want to thank everybody for joining us today. It goes by so fast. <laughs> this was Finding Respect in the Chaos, and this Job Corps is some serious respect out there in the chaos. So remember it, and remember those numbers if you need help. I really want to thank you for joining us today. This was thinktechhawaii.com. Please come back. Um, and join us again. This is Cynthia Lee Sinclair, Finding Respect in the Chaos on thinktechhawaii.com.